you know, I haven't been updating you guys on the status of all of my tanks. So that's what we're going to be doing in this video. I got some really exciting new corals. This being my favorite. So incredibly unfortunate that the white balance on my camera does not want to pick up this meat coral for uh, all of its glory here. For some reason on camera, this, this meat coral looks super distorted because this thing, it, it really, there is no sand bed left. I mean, there wasn't really any sand bed left to begin with, but yeah, it's a monstrosity. A few other additions I have added as well. This little acro here on the left. New chunky edition here. I got it at the Florida Frag Swap a few weeks back and really I just honestly don't even remember what it is. Can't tell you where I'm going to be adding him because there is not really any space left to work with. But hey, you know, save him for uh, the big tank you know, when the big tank is ready. I also got this little uh, hammer here. It looks really similar to uh, this hammer, little almost mini colony I have going on here. I honestly thought for a second that they might be the same hammer, but you know, on second look right now, they they are different. So I, I mean, that's, that's cool. The little stick crew here is doing so well. I'm super happy. Look at that polyp extension on that Walt Disney, eh? Monty has, has grown there though. Isn't that crazy? I mean, that's it's just so weird how they grow and attach to things like that. This little piece that I knocked off the the bigger colony there once upon a time, it's growing in real nice. And the other acros here are just growing insane. I'm gonna have a little colony soon. Miscellaneous chalices here. You stick a coral, you don't really have high hopes. I mean, they're not really your favorite corals either. You just leave them there and you forget about them and then you, you know, you wake up one day and you're like, dang! I mean, look at that growth! You can see we are still battling the Bubble algae, honestly, at this point, I've just given up. Bubble algae will forever be a component of this uh, build. And that's just something I have to accept. Kind of blends into the rock anyway. At least that's what I tell myself. Okay, it's kind of bad. The Duncan. Duncan has grown a lot. It used to be uh, one head and now I think it's about five heads or so. This guy's a little bit angry right now. He's a little bit angry. This guy, it's got the perfect amount of light, the perfect amount of flow living its uh, best life, I guess. Preferred location is not exactly ideal for me. The SPS are probably gonna get kind of angry soon. What is that trunk? Why is it so tall? I can't even see my SPS anymore. It's like a giant tree that, that's hiding all of the other corals and uh, stinging them at the same time. Move the trunk just back there in that corner. Cause it's not like anything would be able to grow back there anyway because of the shadowing from that ledge. Honestly, if we just stuck the trunk back a little bit further, then you know, the torch would come out and not look like a dang tree. That is a filled out Zoa Garden if I ever did see one. They really just bunch together in a very awkward way. All the green ones are encroaching upon each other and all the red ones are here on the side. Great thing about Zoas is no matter how they grow, they're always going to look pretty. Xenia is back. The Xenia is, uh, is taking over again. My corals have grown in uh, a lot and it's not really as easy to uh, sit there and try to scrape it off as it used to be. So I think at a certain point, I should just let it grow in the gaps and, you know, accept my fate. Colony of firework cloves that I purposefully tried to isolate on the sand bed. Okay, it happened anyway. I essentially introduced another form of Xenia. Lepto, as always, showing great growth. The Favia, eh, not so much. Seen a lot of growth with these guys. Granted, it's slow growth, but I mean, I can't complain. They're beautiful gonies. It's worth the wait. Lamonti there. I see some uh, encrusting. Hammer Garden doing splendid. Plating Monty there. I don't know what he's trying to get away with. He's growing on top of the hammer. That's not okay. I definitely need to frag that. My beloved Dance Millie Dance is not faring so well from the winter storm. However, good news is that I have not seen his angry patch uh, grow any any larger. I think I'm just going to continue keep an eye on him. You know, hopefully I, I won't have to frag his little tip off. The little green guy here is showing a little bit more polyp extension. I still really need to uh, take care of these uh, Montes here that are essentially taking over absolutely everything on this ledge, including this Aquaman Monty. Please, please tell me how I can frag this guy because figure out how to frag this guy soon. I don't, I think this whole ledge here is just going to be dedicated to that guy. And you know what? I mean, I really like this coral, but 
you know, I, I don't like it that much. Grafted Plating Monty here is, is doing really well and I'm so excited to see that thing grow out really big. This is the corner that I never really like to acknowledge. Aptasia, I mean, I don't even wanna say it's out of control. It's, it's definitely well beyond that. This Aptasia is so large that I don't think any Bergia on the face of this earth can handle one of these bees, you know? <laughs> What? They're so big. And I uh, know how they've been growing too. Pesky Aptasia here. I've caught them, I've caught them. When I've been feeding my fish, I uh, noticed that these greedy little monsters have been, uh, you know, having a feast themselves. Definitely grab onto little fish food. Almost certain that has contributed to this ridiculous monster growth here. And I'm really upset by it. I, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I, I I almost think I should just cut off this ledge completely. If they use Aptasia F, can't get down to this angle and uh, get them successfully without them taking notice. Unless I use a laser, which I'm really deathly afraid of doing and would rather, you know, not. I don't know how this issue is going to be resolved. These corals are genuinely suffering here. You know, originally in my last video, I said that this guy might have a chance. I'm starting to think uh, the chances for him are also slim. This guy, despite all odds of being in the center of all the Aptasia nightmare, is really doing fairly well. I mean, I'm seeing new growth here. However, this, uh, this unfortunate Digi is just, I mean, have you ever seen a Digi this angry before in your life? I don't think so. I mean, this thing has simultaneously got Aptasia growing on him, anger from the winter storm, and I, I think I even see a little bit of algae. Like, I even see multiple types of algae are growing on him. This is just seriously embarrassing, and honestly, I really don't have anything that I can say that can redeem myself. This is just totally unacceptable, and I, I'll be the first to acknowledge Acknowledge that. I'm just trying to think logically <laughs> about what I can do about this point because it's like drop of the hand, I guess. It's just gonna spread this Aptasia all over my tank. You know, the fact that I've got it confined to this one location now, let's let's not ruin a good thing. Flavia there is doing well. Also, Bubble Monster. This thing is uh, still a nuisance. I don't know if you can tell, but it's grown three times larger. A little feeder tentacles there. I mean, it's just trying to grow as big as possible. Obviously haven't moved it uh, from underneath that ledge, so it's still stealing all that beautiful negative space. I don't know, it's like one of those corals you despise, but since you've had it since you first started keeping reef tanks, and it's essentially survived every bad thing ever that could ever happened to it and it's just grown stronger as a result. I mean, that's the kind of coral that you just you just have an allegiance to. You just kind of respect it. There really should be no way and yet it continues to surprise you. <laughs> Little Holstein here is also doing really well. I don't know where Gobi is hiding because he found a new cave. This cave used to be right down here, but I guess he found another nook because he is nowhere to be found these days except for feeding time. But yeah, that is, uh, that is my beautiful tank here uh, with all of its problems. Got a lot to work on and a lot to do. I can't say I'm hating it. It's starting to look real filled out. The vision is starting to come to life. I don't know, I really dig it. These names are killing me. Y'all are way better at naming fish than I am. I can't even decide now because they're all so good. I guess we'll make a decision here soon when I actually add them into my tank, if I ever do at this point, because we are so behind with this build. And don't worry, EC Nano Reef, I got you. And honestly, for no good reason. I mean, I really love minimalist aquascapes, like a lot, a lot. I've only ever had my tank set up for coral too. So I kind of neglected to think about their hiding spots like Sabella fella brought up. Uh, I'm seriously considering adding another structure completely at this point. Feels so bad for this guy. I mean, I get a comment on every new video that it's the worst they've ever seen. Honestly, that's a pretty big feat to accomplish on a weekly basis. And not gonna lie, I'm kind of impressed with myself for that.